suppose you have an investment plan which requires huge investment at the beginning of the period and it will generate return or cash flows in the future how do you make an investment decision like that so there are some tools that help us to answer this kind of questions and I have listed most commonly used basic tools they can help us whether to undertake that kind of investment or not starting from net present value to the property index in this video I'm going to explain how to you payback period discounted payback period and profit IT index in order to help us whether to undertake the investment or not I want to start with the payback period what is this payback period in a simple term payback period refers to how long does it take to recover all your initial investment that's a simple meaning uh, of the payback period how to calculate I have given you the formula here but at the beginning it doesn't make much sense so I'm not going to spend my time explaining the formula here but what I want to tell you though how can we use payback period in order to make an investment decision so the basic rule is this before you calculate payback period you make a kind of tentative guidelines that when you would like to get money back so let's say that your payback period your, your tentatively you'd like to get money back within three years so and you go and calculate the payback period so if the payback period is less than three years then you undertake that project but if the payback period is more than three years you don't undertake this project this is simple way to use payback period in investment decision making and most mostly people like the project with shorter payback period because it has a, a lower risk and you get all your money back sooner what I want to do is I want to explain this concept with an example let's see an example so this is the same example that I have been using so the initial cash flow is 45,000 that means you invest 45,000 in the current year and that will generate five future cash flows starting with 28,000 in year one 12,000 in year two 10,000 in year three 10,000 in year four and 10,000 in year five so what is payback period without any complexity what I want to tell you how do you calculate see here 45,000 the money you invested at the beginning so you get 28,000 back in the first year so how much is remaining you simply add 45,000 right plus 28,000 so negative 17,000 right this means after first year you still have not recovered 17,000 back so after second year you get another 12,000 back so 17,000 you still have to recover but after second year you get 12,000 back so how much is remaining then minus 5,000 right so minus 5,000 is the money that you have to get after year two in order to recover all your investment back but in year three you're gonna get what 10,000 back that means do you need all that money to get your 5,000 back no so what does it say that means if you undertake this project it's gonna take somewhere in between two to three years to get the money back right so so say approximately here somewhere two to three year that would be the payback period for this example so this is the concept of payback period but what we do is people have developed a more formal way of calculating the payback period how do you calculate that so you have all your cash flows what you do is you calculate cumulative cash flow which means 
you keep on adding the subsequent cash flow. So for the year zero, same cash flow is the cumulative cash flow. But for the next period, what you do is you add 45 with 28 and negative 17,000 is the cumulative cash flow for year one. So for year two, how do you calculate cumulative cash flow? You simply add negative 70,000 to the cash flow that you get in year two. Then negative 5,000 is the cumulative cash flow for year two. For year three, you just add this with 10,000 and positive cash flow. So see here, the cumulative cash flow goes from negative to positive in between year two and three. That means the payback period for this example is somewhere in between two and three years. That means within two to three years, the investment is going to bring all your initial investment. This is the concept and how you calculate this. Simply what you do is, see after year two, the cumulative cash flow converts from negative to positive. So what you do is, that's why this is two. After two year, the cash flow, the cumulative cash flow converts from negative to positive. That's why this is two. And then there's a plus sign. And then after, in the numerator, the negative, how much is left to recover? That goes in the numerator. And how much cash flow is going to come in the subsequent year is going to be in the denominator. So 5,000 over 10,000. See that 10,000 coming here and 5,000 coming here. This is 0.5. And if you add this to the 2.5 year is the payback period, which means if you undertake this project, it's going to take two and two and a half year to get the money back. Simple, right? Let's get on to the next example for the discounted payback period. What is discounted payback period? Exactly same as the payback period, but the problem with the payback period, if you remember earlier example, you have your cash coming into different period. You don't discount them all. You just add them all together thinking that the cash flow coming in the different time period are the same. But in real life, this is not true, right? So what you do in the discounted payback period is you discount the payback. So you discount the cash flow and calculate the payback and that's called the discounted payback period. So what is discounted payback period then? It is still, it refers to how long it takes to get the money back considering the time value of money part. So how you calculate discounted payback period? Again, we have a formula. But again, this formula doesn't make much sense until you use an example. So I'm going to show you this an example. But I wanted to ask you how you make whether to invest or not to invest decision based on discounted payback period. Again, before you make an investment, you make a tentative guidelines for yourself. Like how long you can wait to get the money back. So your, your preference should be your guiding principle. If you want your money back within five years, then you take all the project whose discounted payback period is five or less years. And if any project which requires more than five years to get your money back, then you're not going to take that project, right? Very simple. So let's see the same example here. Uh, but what I want to do here is this time, instead of calculating the cumulative cash flow for this, this given amount of cash flow, what I want to do is I want to find the present value first. See here, I want to calculate the present value of each of these cash flows. So present value for first period, I mean the current period is the same. So you can calculate the present value of each of the future cash flow. Remember how you find the present value, right? For the first period, one plus the discount rate to the power of one, and it gives 25,454.5. For the second one, 
uh, second period cash flow over one plus ten percent of power two and so and so forth so what you do this time is you find the present value of each cash flow okay but earlier case you didn't discount them all you just simply add them all thinking that all cash flows are the same but in real life this is not same because these cash flows are coming in the different time period so if you want to make the sense of adding them you have to discount them to all to the present and then you can add it right so the first step you would do is find the present value of each of the future cash flow as I have done here and once you calculate the present value of future cash flow then you find now cumulative cash flow for the discounted cash flows not the nominal cash flows okay so that's why the cumulative is going to be your for the current year cumulative is the same as the nominal cash flow right here and for the next one again like earlier you are going to add this guy with the discounted cash flow of year one and that's going to be this and for the cumulative cash flow for year two is going to be this guy the cumulative cash flow for year one plus the present value of second period cash flow and similarly the cumulative cash flow for year three would be cumulative cash flow for year two plus the present value of third year cash flow and so and so forth so in this example again we are going to see when that cumulative cash flow is be becoming from negative to positive so if you see here in year three that is negative but in year four it's positive which means the the future cash flow before four year is enough to give the initial cash flow that's what it is saying so roughly you can add the cash flow the present bill of cash flow from year one two three and you get very close to four thousand five hundred but not enough four thousand but if you add the fourth year cash flow it's going to be more than the the initial cash flow again the discounted payback period is still how long it is going to take to get all the money back so from this example we can roughly say that it might be somewhere between three and four year because after three year you still have 2114.95 not recovered but in fourth year the present bell of 10,000 is 6830.13 which is more than what you need to recover all that money so it says that you need somewhere two three to four years to get that money back so how do you calculate this simple like earlier so that cumulative cash flow is converting from negative to positive from three to four years that's why it's going to be three year and plus again how do you calculate the remaining time look at how much cash you have to recover 2114.95 that is the money you still need to recover your initial investment and how much are you going to get the present value of fourth year's cash flow is 6830.13 so in the denominator this will be here and if you divide this it is going to be 0.31 and the sum of this is going to be 3.31 so this is the discounted payback period which means for this project it takes about 3.31 years to recover all that money back so this is how you calculate discounted payback period and now finally I want to focus on profitability index but it is one of the easiest to interpret what is this see how you calculate profitability index it is just the present value of all your future cash flows divided by initial outlay that means 
there is your initial investment and there is your present bill of all your future cash flows. So you find the ratio and you can use this profitability index to make an investment decision. And if you think a little bit carefully, you understand its meaning and how to use it. So, but I have given you the definition. If the PI is profitability index is greater than or equal to one, then you accept the project. But if the PI is less than one, you reject the project. It makes sense, right? The benefit is on the numerator side and the cost is on the denominator side. So what does it give? So basically I have said here, this gives the benefit per unit of cost based on the time value of money. So this is simple to interpret. For example, if your profitability index is 1.1, it implies that for every dollar of investment, you are creating 1.1 value. That is why 0 0.10 is additional value that investment is creating. So I think if you give a little bit of time to think about this formula, it makes sense to you. What I want to do is how to calculate this in for this example, so see here, the same example, we have a initial investment and then the future cash flows. What you need is you need the present value of all your future cash flow, like for a present value of each of this cash flow, right? Like here, you calculate the present value and you sum them all and divide that. See here, sum of all these present value of future cash flows, right? And divide by the initial investment. So that means the present value of all your future cash flows is 55,924.4 over initial investment is 45,000, so it's 1.24, which means for each dollar you invest, you're going to get 1.24. That means your return is more than your cost. And this kind of project is profitable. So briefly, uh, the, I, this is already too long, but I just want to explain you very briefly how to do this in Excel for the same problem. Here we have in column A, we have period. In column B, we have cash flows. So remember, what I want to do is you need the present value of cash flow to calculate discounted payback period. That's why I have calculated the present value of your future cash flow in column C. And I have shown you the formula in column D. And cumulative cash flow in column E, this cumulative cash flow is for not discounted cash flows. And I have cumulative cash the cumulative cash flow for present bill of cash flow. See here. So you are going to use cumulative cash flow column to calculate the payback period. And you're going to use the cumulative present bill of cash flow to calculate the discounted payback period. And how do you calculate that? And Okay, look at the for, uh, formula here, how you calculate this, and I'm going to explain more of this in class, and I hope it makes sense to you. Thank you.